the next one. Mr President, today I speak about some of the issues that many elderly people in my electorate are experiencing. It's widely accepted that looking after ourselves and keeping healthy means more than just eating well and getting regular exercise. It also means taking care of our mental health, our emotional wellbeing and our sense of belonging. The feedback loop between our physical, mental and emotional health is also well established and nothing has brought this to light more than the advent of COVID-19. Over the past month or so, I've been hearing from a number of constituents about the so-called dancing ban, not from the younger, more nightclub-oriented contingent, <laughs> but from our older ranks. These are the people who like to head out to the Australian Italian Club, the over 50s clubs, or the local RSL for a cup of tea, maybe a glass of wine, and dance for one afternoon a week. I've received a number of letters from people to whom this one weekly activity means the absolute world. <coughs> one of these letters, the author of which I'll keep anonymous, has said, our social life at our age has a limited span and we're feeling the effects of lack of exercise in the form of depression and isolation. At our age, we don't drink, we drive. Another person <laughs> in their 80s says that now they just sit around. They feel older than they are and their outlook on life is less happy than it once was. Yet another writer has said that their doctor has said, please don't stop dancing because it's so good for their heart health. Others have special physical needs and the movement and music helps them to relax and have an afternoon of enjoyment. Being able to move, have a cup of tea, a sandwich and a good chat with their mates is an absolute necessity and highlight of these people's weeks. One lady I've met at one of these dances is 93 and up until COVID was a regular attendee. And I know that she's told me many times just how enjoyable it is for a 93-year-old to get up there and dance and feel alive. Of the numerous letters in my possession, there's one common thread. The overwhelming concerns about the mental health implications of having a much-loved recreational physical activity stymied. Of course, solutions like having separate food and drinking areas in these venues has been explored. But the rules state that as soon as someone leaves the dancing area to the food and drink area, they can't return. For younger people at their leavers' dinners, as we've seen in the news, this might not be such a problem. But for older people, this is a bit harder when they need more frequent rests. And as I mentioned to the Premier when speaking to him, when they're dancing, they really need their table and chairs to sit down and they need their glass of water or their cup of tea. So it is very difficult for them to meet the current requirements. Additionally, hosting venues are more or less obliged to sell food and drink for these events. Otherwise, they'd be trading at a loss to pay for staff, music and other costs without any way to make a bit of money. We can't expect these venues to simply run for free. Many people are feeling stuck between a rock and a hard place. I want to make it clear that I believe the government has done a stellar job in suppressing the virus here in Tasmania, and I know they're doing everything they can to accommodate as many people as possible. However, I can too easily foresee the detrimental results this particular issue will have for our older contingency, with the mental, physical and social effects already manifesting, and many, quite literally, pleading to be allowed to do what they love. I hope that very soon, like the Leavers' Dinners, a reasonable and common-sense solution can be reached. Thank you.